Hello everyone, this is Lolly. Today I'm going to work on the cover of this. It's called a blank canvas journal or planner, essentials planner from Elizabeth Craft. Let me get this elevated here real quick. I'm just going to put it up on the box. Save the box it came in. Just to, just to get it up off the rings a little bit there. I got this fabric that I got from Topology, and I love it. You can see this is like all browns, and got some really cool florals and polka dots, and oh, I love the texture of this one. Look at that. Anyway, there are so many in here. So I selected a few. Okay, I, this is the size this came in. I trimmed this one down so it would be a square. And then I also got a section of this. And then what I wanted to do was use a napkin. I have this IHR brand. I don't know what that stands for. Made in Germany. Ideal Home Range, that's what it's called. And this particular napkin is called the Honey Bee C737700. Now I want to put that in the middle of this, but if I did, you would see the stripes through this pattern. So what I want to do is adhere this first to some mixed media cardstock, like that. I'm sure I must have a scrap in here somewhere. Oh, look, there is one right there. So let's separate this. I only need one of them. And I've already taken the other ply off of this. You know, there were several plies in it and I took the other one off. So what I'll do is I'll just use this golden gel medium. And I did notice when I did a video on uh, testing different gel mediums and I noticed the golden needed to be stirred up a little bit almost every time. And I'm really only trying to capture this center part here, the oval, so. so I don't really need to go out too far with the gel medium. Now, one of the things you can do when you're wanting to get this really smoothed out well and you don't want to get your fingers all gooey is to do this. Otherwise, you could tear your napkin as your fingers get the gel medium on it. So, okay, we're going to let that set up. When it's dry, what I'm going to do is probably go over it with another coat of this, and then I will cut it out right around that oval, but I'm gonna let that get good and dry. I've switched back to this uh, silicone mat because I discovered I don't like the glare that was coming up from that other mat. So while that is drying, what I'm going to do is work on this. And here's my thinking. I want this here with the B in the middle. This is just a napkin, but this will just give me an idea of what this looks like. I cut one out before I realized it was going to be a little too thin and I need to back it up. So what I'm thinking is to glue this down here and then this will come up here. I may have to trim off the excess right there. Now what I'm going to do this time, so I'm just going to come between these two slots right here. But what I'm going to do is use Fabri-Tac to adhere that. Now if I squirt this Fabri-Tac on there, it's going to take forever. I know what that's like. I've done it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do something I haven't done before. I'm going to try and dump, dump it out this way and then spread it around with the palette knife and see if I can't get it a little faster. Fabri-Tac is going to work really well on this. Oh yeah, that's so much better than the last time I did this. Now I'm letting it go all the way on to, off to the edges here. Oops, that wasn't good. Okay, now we've got a stringy mess. I've got to open this up. And I remember that the it's going to go to this corner here. Pull it a little over to it matches right there. There we go. Now this adheres pretty quickly, so you've got to work pretty quickly. I'm pulling it down. Now this end curled under, but it's going to be covered up, so I'm not going to see that in the end. That worked pretty quickly. Okay, 
Now, the other thing I did was I trimmed one of these down and that's going to go right on top of that. And I think I'm okay. This isn't as big of an area. I think I'm okay to go ahead and squirt this. I would recommend the Fabri-Tac rather than the Fabri-Fix for this. Um, Fabri-Tac is sold in the fabric areas of your craft store. Fabri-Fix is slightly more diluted and it's sold by the paper area of your craft store. That's going to go right in the middle of that. And I did another notebook like this with the Fabri-Tac on this and it adhered really well and it was faux leather. And then I also stamped out a word that I want to put on there. This one, imagine. And it is just a stamp that I've had for years from Stampers Anonymous, E3648. And because this is going on fabric, this will also have Fabri-Tac on it. And I used um, some Walnut Distress Ink to put on that. This is drying really well, but I can tell from the back it's still pretty moist, so we're going to give that a little more time. Then I'm going to take that striped fabric that I showed you, and I'm going to put it on, sew it on to this. Let me clean this mat up. Okay, so that dried, and I put a coat of the gel medium over the top to kind of seal it there from, you know, water and everything, and then I cut it out right around the end, the edge of that black border. That was just, all that work was just so that you wouldn't see the stripes through the, the pale, you know, thin, translucent napkin. So, and then this is all dry, it's looking great. Um, but what I want to do with this is to get it on some of this, which is cotton batting, let's see here. These are not fabric scissors, so they're not cutting the batting too well. <laughs> And I've got these clips here. I'm going to fasten this down. And I think what I'm going to do is kind of come down, got a couple stripes this way, and then go all the way around the exterior top stitching on this. I'm not a big quilter. I have done some quilting in the past, just like baby size or lap blankets, but not, you know, I have never made a full size quilt. Okay, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. Okay, so there we have, you can see the pattern I just did on the back there. And then I'm going to take my pinky scissors and just trim off the excess here. And I'm going outside the sewing that I just did. Let's just bring this in because I need that. Okay, that's going to go over that. Now, if you're unsure where your, uh, your binding elastic is going to go, put that on there just so you know. There you go, right across the middle. It's going to go up here. So I think what I'll do is raise that. No, I don't need to. But one thing I thought about was offsetting it just a little bit. If you wanna make sure it's perfectly centered, you can come down from this right there. If you don't need it to be centered, you can use the little scraps that you cut off like from here and just add a little bit of, you know, a little bit of decoration down here. And then I can bring this off center and, and this can actually be off centered as well, like more to the right, more to the left. I think I will put that right in the middle though. Another thing you could do would be sew right around this. I think I will put this down. Once the um, Fabri-Tac has set up, you can just peel it up. I just peeled it right off of here. You could peel it right up as though it were like rubber cement. People have asked if Fabri-Tac is toxic. Once it is set up, you know, cured, then it's no longer toxic. All right, now, it's a little harder to spread this around with a palette knife on the back of this. It's very absorbent, but I've noticed that if I go ahead and get this really well primed, so like the most of the Fabri-Tac is at the bottom of here. I'm wondering if I should get my sleeve out of the way. Now I'm going inside the sewing line. I don't have to carry this all the way 
to the edge of the zigzag here. I'm moving it off center a little bit. I like that. Okay, and we are going to put this on also with Fabri Tac. Remember, it's going on fabric. Now, the last thing you want to do is see if you find any extra doodads, buttons, or whatever you want to put on there. You will notice where the fabric tack was a little more thick that it will seep through the fabric and you will see it through the front. It did that here and I just kind of rubbed off the excess. Some beautiful brown buttons to look at. A couple gold ones. And some of these that are, what do you call that? Um, kind of a mottled color. That's too big, I think. And then you also have to decide whether or not you are going to add, you know, thread, like thread the button up first, give it a real vintagey look. So one of the things I like to do is put those there, walk away and come back later and look and see how much I still like it, if at all. I also have these, which I think are gonna be perfect. These are flat back pearl, fake pearls. They're, you know, like plastic. Those might be good too. So what I'm going to do is put them here and see what I think about that because they are the color of this fabric here. Ooh, I do love it. In the meantime, I do know that I like these. So what I'm going to do is bring those over here and use the gem tack to secure those. I'm gonna get my jewel picker. They are so pretty. I'm gonna use the larger size because I think these gems are pretty big. Pushing them down to make sure they really, that glue really puts, gets into that fabric there. Another thing could be the use of some of these like paper flowers. I think we have our winning combination right there. Just to make sure. I like the brown, the darker button better. And it's wood. I think that gives us another texture yet. So we have cardstock and ink. We have three different fabrics. We have a napkin. We've got pearls. We've got this. So all in all, I think we've got a winning combination here. I'm going to use the Nouveau for these paper flowers just to glue them together. One of the reasons that I'm kind of off centering things to the left is that this band, which protects your side here from the elastic, it, it creates more of a visual uh, impact on the right side of the journal. And this is just going to miss that, by the way. Now I could use gem tack or I could use power tack to adhere this button, but I know the gem tack is pretty fast adhering. Okay, there we have it. So now I know that my pearls are not quite adhered, so I'm gonna be careful right there. This is what it's going to look like right there. Awesome. Well, that's really fun. These blank canvas journals are in my shop. I love working with it. And there's also room on the inside so that if you wanted to decorate the pockets, so what I could do is take this B here and put that right inside there with some uh, of the, the gel medium. I think I'll put that right there, but I will do that off camera. Thank you so much for watching. I will give you a link underneath this video to all the materials that I used in this project.